Most people, when they come upon the gallery, I think are rather surprised that these little books um, were even important objects or that they could be so finely and so splendidly painted. People often don't realize that the greatest artists, the finest artists of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance illuminated manuscripts. They were a primary art form, not a minor or decorative art form. And the earliest great illuminated manuscripts were of liturgical use. They were used in the celebration of the divine services. There are books that were written by hand and painted by hand and painted with gold, silver, lapis, and precious materials um, to glorify the Word of God. The Stanheim Missal is arguably the greatest manuscript uh, in the Getty Collection. It is considered the finest uh, German illuminated manuscript of the 12th century. This miniature on the left is one of the great miniatures, I think, in the book. It shows Christ um, at his second coming, where he's shown resurrected in glory, his hand is raised in blessing, and it's all arranged in this very simple design with the mandorla in the center, the strong symmetry. The symbols of the evangelists are shown in these little half circles. It essentially has a very elaborate geometric structure. And part of the beauty of this book is, despite the amount of moral and spiritual message that the artist endeavors to imply that it's all done with a great kind of clarity. One of the greatest manuscripts in the collection is this prayer book called the Prayer Book of Albrecht of Brandenburg. And each of the prayers is illustrated with a magnificent miniature which tells the very, very familiar story of Christ from the time of the Annunciation. And all of these miniatures are set in these wonderful nocturnal scenes that are lit only by candlelight and torches as you see here so that, in fact, the effect in itself is very, very dramatic. Christ is always shown as this very human, very sort of sensitive and fragile individual. Uh, this manuscript is a great secular manuscript um, written by Giovanni Boccaccio, the great Italian author of the Decameron. On the fates of illustrious men and women tells how people rose up to fame and power and importance and often, not long afterwards, suffered uh, unpleasant fate. The miniature that you see here uh, tells the story of Adam and Eve, and it's painted by the Boussicot master. The Boussicot master was the greatest French illuminator of the first half of the 15th century and an enormously influential and important artist. Part of his greatness, in fact, is as a storyteller for the wonderful clarity with which he conveys the different narratives in the book. On the left, you see Boccaccio himself uh, as he writes the story of this book. And on the right, we have the stooped Adam and Eve, the aged couple, are approaching him, in fact, to tell their narrative. So in a way, the story all begins with Boccaccio and his vision of their life. But such a book was opened at night, and as the owner or whatever sat in bed, uh, one of his aides would actually read to them aloud. And then, of course, they would have the opportunity to look at the wonderful pictures. I think it's important to keep in mind that although they were books, they came to be prized more and more as works of art. They were brought out on special occasions, and they were shown to colleagues and friends and courtiers as an example of the status and the taste and the judgment of their patrons.